What's going on? It's your boy Connor from the Dolphins Dive. I know it's been a minute since I made a real video like this, but we're back. Um, obviously, I've been busy. It's the off season; things are kind of slow, so I'm not trying to force content. <clears throat> but it has been a little too long, so I'm hoping to get more on a consistent track. So, as you can tell by today's title, today's video is about free agents the Dolphins could look to sign. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen it floating around. The Dolphins, despite all the moves that we've made, are still one of the top teams in salary cap. And that's just due to how they structured the contracts. Um, if they wanted to take on more of the money, we very well could have and we could be at zero cap. But I think they want to just continue to have some flexibility, be able to add some rotational and depth to the roster. And I think that's kind of why they've kept some of the money, um, just in case injuries happen or something doesn't pan out. So I'm going to go over some of the positions um, that we could see some potential additions and then go over the players. Um, which would follow suit. So I think the most one that people have been banging the table for on the offensive side of the ball is obviously center. And Chris Greer has even come out publicly and stated that they're going at competition with Michael Dieter at that position. Now, could be in the draft, could be in free agency. That's yet to be determined. Um, there's only really two options at center. Um, obviously, everyone's been pounding the table for J.C. Treader, myself included. Um... Who knows what's happening with him? It's been pretty quiet on that front. I've heard. I don't know the validity of it, but apparently he's not interested in the Dolphins. But money talks. I don't know. I, like I said, I also don't know where those comments came from. So we'll see what happens there. That would be that would be a home run uh, signing, especially if it's nothing crazy in terms of money. And then the last guy um, in terms of free agents that you could look to compete with uh, Dieter would be Matt Paradis. Uh, I think formerly with the Panthers. Um, he's a veteran guy. He's got a lot of experience at the position. Uh, I think he tore his ACL in like October. Um, so he's still recovering from that. Uh, I'm sure he's going to take some more time before he signs. But he could be someone that you, like, you get a late addition right before camp. Um, I don't know when he's going to be fully recovered. But it's a guy that you sign. You know what you got in him. Um, he might have lost a step or two, but he's still a solid vet. Um, that could push Dieter for the position and help Dieter develop too, even if um, he doesn't play himself. So I think those are probably the two potential free agent options at center. Like I said, there's also the draft potential, and that will be a whole separate video that I hopefully will come out with. Drafts in like 10 days, so hopefully soon. Um, the only other really position I could see as needing an upgrade on the offensive side of the ball is really right tackle, potentially, and that, that's even up for a debate. Like quarterback good, running back good, receivers, tight ends, fullbacks, everything where across the offensive line besides, like I said, right tackle is the only other potential spot. Um, obviously, it's been pretty clear. Right tackle is going to be fought between Liam Eikenberg and Austin Jackson. Um, and I, I, I see them being comfortable. They're both with young guys that they've invested a lot of picks in. I don't see them adding additional competition. But say in camp, both guys are kind of fucking stinking then maybe you go out and sign one of these guys, have them compete and potentially start. Um, so I've got four names. And I'm not going to lie, I, I don't know the, the length of their scheme fit. There are some connections with the coaching staff. I'm going to start with Brian Bulaga. Obviously has a relationship with Frank Smith. Um, he's a vet. He's getting older, but he's still a solid guy. He did pretty well last year for the Chargers. Uh, Daryl Williams, formerly of the Bills. He's still out there. He's, once again, a solid guy. Nothing, no crazy high-end guys, but they're solid guys that they can compete for the job and hold the spot pretty well. Marcus Cannon, the former Patriot, was with the Texans last season. Once again, not a high-end guy, but a solid vet. And last but not least, Dennis Kelly. I believe he was with the Titans last year. I don't know. He's, he's bounced around a little bit. I also don't know if he went to the Packers. Might have been there, but he once again solid right tackle, good run blocker. Um, but I feel like this is a worst case scenario. Ideally, Austin Jackson or Liam Eikerberg pan out um, and aren't liabilities. I, I think I don't think they're going to add a right tackle personally. So defensively, there's still some some spots that I could see some additions, um, and they would be well, pretty impactful. Um, despite they might not, the way our defense is structured is everyone's got roles, so. Well, that's how it was structured. I'm assuming Josh Boyer will, will keep it the same, but we actually don't know. But everyone's got roles. You sign players, you have them fit to a specific role, and if they continue to grow, they can grow out of that role and get more. So 
I would say we need two positions. The first one I'm going to go over is a pass rusher. Um, we've got guys. We have, we have a solid enough pass rushing group, but the famous saying is you can never have enough pass rushers, and that's true. So getting some depth at the position to be able to continue to rotate and keep guys fresh would be ideal. I've got a couple of names. They range from high end to low end, um, but they all have commonality in terms of they can they can rush the pasture and they actually have some versatility. So Jadavion Clowney is the top of the list. I, I don't think this happens. He's too high end of a player. I don't think the Dolphins are looking to go this high end. Um, but he's a phenomenal run defender. He's got some pass rush upside. Great athleticism. Would fit well in the scheme. The Dolphins have been linked to him for like the past five years now, it seems like. Um, I'm pretty sure he's got inside-outside versatility in terms of playing um, interior. Not like obviously like a th every down guy, but in terms of rotating and kind of like how Emmanuel Agbo does. I think he does have that versatility. The next guy also, I believe, has that versatility. Once again, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure they do have this versatility. JPP, um, Bucks let him go. He's still out there. Could be a potential cheap guy you sign and have him as a rotational guy, help him teach some of the younger guys. I don't, I don't see what's to lose. Next guy has been linked to the Dolphins. We worked him out, Melvin Ingram. This guy, I know for a fact, has inside-outside versatility. He can play three-tech, five-tech. Um, and I'm pretty sure he's a solid run defender as well, so... Like I said, we're not going to be signing some high-end crazy pass rusher, but you guys, you get a guy that can help rotate in, play 40% of snaps, help um, get other people off the field, and do a good job. Like that, that's that got value in this league. Um, next guy I have is Anthony Barr. A little bit different style than the last guy's named. Um, I would say he's more of like an outside backer, but can rush the passer. Um, he's more of like a... He's similar to Andrew Van Kinkle, very similar to that role where he can do both. Like I, I wouldn't say Andrew Van Kinkle can necessarily cover, but they can drop him into coverage at times. And I would say Anthony Barr is better in that aspect than Van Ginkle, whereas Van Ginkle is probably the better pass rusher. But you get some versatility there. Um, it's not necessarily a move I see happening, but just a name to keep an eye out for. I got two more on this list. Tack McKinley, uh, drafted by the Falcons. I think he was with the Browns. Um, I don't, I'm not going to act like, I don't know much about him. I saw the name, thought it was interesting. Um, he's obviously got some upside, uh, rushing the passer. It could be a potential flyer you take. And like I said, just have him rotate in and out. And the last guy, <laughs> this is going to get a kick out of some of you guys. I don't see it happening. I don't know where the bridges got burned, but there's a connection. So I'm just going to mention it. Kyle Van Noy. Um, once again, as a cheap rotational guy, I don't think this is a bad idea. Um, he's versatile. He, he knows the defense. He can cover, rush. He can, like I said, like the whole Andrew Van Ginkel thing. He can help rotate in that role. He's very good in terms of um, when we saw him with the Dolphins. They, they love to use him in stunts and twists and games. And he's very good at that. As a pure pass rusher, he's not great. But like I said, he's got a, he's got a role on this defense that would work for him but I, I don't know where his beef with I don't know if it was with Flo I don't know if it was with him Flo and um, Boyer I don't know if it's with the front office I don't know I don't see it happening but it's just a guy that would fit the role so that, that, that's that's why I mentioned him so that's if I, that's all I got for the edge rushers the last one that I have um, listed for a potential need for us to sign is inside linebacker and this has the guy that I've been pounding the table for for a while now. Um, and we, we brought all our linebackers back, right? But I think they could add a name to it, add some add some sturdiness to the position instead of relying on the guys that we ran with last year because it was a little iffy. Um, so the guy at the top of my list that I would love for us to sign is Alexander Johnson from the Denver Broncos. Um if you remember, I mean, all my free agent videos, he's been getting mentioned. I viewed, uh, why am I blanking on his name? Devontae Campbell. So Devontae Campbell and him are, I would say, are pretty similar players. Where Devontae is more proven and um, known. But I feel like Alexander Johnson is very similar. They're big guys. He's like 6'4", 250. Um, he can run, hit, and cover. Um, he's just a versatile guy. Like, he's, if you remember the uh, the Dolphins Broncos game like he was all over the field I'm like this guy's massive and he's 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 able to cover the back 
Um, they had him in coverage. He was able to rush the passer. So he's a good, versatile guy, a sure tackler. Um, Kyle Krabs, locked on Dolphins, likes to mention him a lot too. But yeah, Alexander Johnson would be a home run signing. He'd fit this defense very well and give give the, uh, the linebacker core a really sturdy, sturdy guy. Um, next guy, I don't know if he necessarily fits the defense. I kind of think we already have – we don't already have something similar in Atlanta Roberts, but it's Dante Hightower from the Patriots. It, it's just a Patriots connection. It's easier. It's easy to say he was there, he could fit here, and it's true they would fit. But in terms of the need at the position, I don't know if he's the perfect fit because Hightower is great at – I mean, he, he's a great linebacker. He can rush the passer. Um, I'm pretty sure – I don't know where I heard the story from, but basically Dante, oh, it was Coach Voss. Shout out Coach Voss. Follow him on Twitter. Uh, subscribe to his YouTube. But, like, the Patriots would literally had like, an entire thing where, like, Hightower was running the stunts. Like, he was in control of all of that. So, he's a very high IQ player. Um, can help blitz the rush, uh, the quarterback. And he, he's decent in coverage as well. Um, but that's what I mean. Like, I feel like the Dolphins need more of, like, a coverage guy um, that gives you a little more... Um, coverage or across the field, like more sideline to sideline guy, rather than someone that's kind of limited athletically, um, but can rush the passer. Next guy, also Patriots connection, never does good outside of the Patriots, but always ends up back there. Jamie Collins. See, this is the kind of guy that I would think would make a little more sense for the Dolphins. He's crazy athletic. Um, he's a little more rangy than Hightower. Um, but like I said, he usually doesn't pan out whenever he leaves New England. Um, but another guy to keep an eye out for, and the last guy I have on this list, um, he, he kind of fits more of the mold of pass coverage, being a little more rangy, Quan Alexander. He's dealt with some injuries, um, but he was recently with the Saints. Um, but we've seen what he's able to do. He's rangy, um, solid in pass coverage, just a solid all-around player. Like I said, does have injury history. But... Nonetheless, I think those are some of the guys that the Dolphins could look to target. Comment down below um, some players you would like to see and you agree with. Um, I appreciate you guys for watching. It means a lot to me. It really does. Um, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. And until next time, I'll catch you all. Have a great day.